with Halloween just around the corner, I thought what a great opportunity to discuss five of my favorite spooky or supernatural gimmicks in professional wrestling. What's going on pro wrestling fans? My name is Jose Ramos Jr. And again, join me on this week's five count to talk about five of our spookiest wrestling gimmicks of all time. But before I begin my list, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications in order to stay up to date with all the pro wrestling content that is produced on this channel. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the list. Now, I do want to preface that this is my personal list. I know there's going to be a lot of names that are going to be left off, but keep in mind, it is only five individual names and also it's in my preference. Now, with that being said, let's start with number five, Jake the Snake Roberts. Although he's not necessarily a supernatural gimmick, but the presence of loan of Jake the Snake Roberts, I think earns a spot on my personal list. I talk about the the importance of a promo. And with Jake the Snake Roberts, what I really appreciated about him is that it was different than your typical 80s promo where you had guys like Randy Savage, Ultimate Warrior, and Hulk Hogan with so much high octane energy and just practically yelling at the audience. Jake Roberts was able to slow down the cadence, almost down to a whisper, and really forced audiences to listen in to the words that he was saying. You look into the eyes of Jake the Snake Roberts and you saw no soul. On top of that, he had Damien, his trusted snake with him at all times. And for those who are like me and aren't really that fond of snakes, that in itself was intimidating as well. You look at his time in the WWF, especially in the 80s and the early 90s and Jake Roberts was one of those wrestling figures that terrified a lot of kids again because of the calculated the the cold presence that he had in the ring outside of the ring and not to mention again Damien but Jake the Snake Roberts I think goes down as really an important factor in professional wrestling because he left an impression on so many young professional wrestling fans as well as future professional wrestlers. He gave the blueprint as to what it meant to be an interesting and innovative heel in a different time. I think, quite frankly, he was ahead of his time, if anything. Again, in the time when professional wrestling was loud, bombastic, and colorful, Jake Roberts brought it down to simplicity. He brought it to a sense of reality. And I don't know about you, but reality is kind of scary as it is. At number four, I have Mankind, specifically Mick Foley's best incarnation, I think, Mankind. You look at the early incarnation of Mankind and how he had, you know, pulling out his hair, he had the Hannibal Lecter-like mask, and there was moments early on in 1996 when he had first debuted in the WWF where he would rock himself back and forth, back and forth. You never knew what was on his mind. He had these promos similar to like a Jake Roberts where that level of emotion drew the audiences in but at times he could snap on a dime and his presentation he seemed like a man that sensed no pain in fact he welcomed it look at his matches against like Shawn Michaels during mind games the Hell in a Cell match against The Undertaker I can remember vividly highlight reels of mankind forcibly stabbing himself in the leg of course it was a work I should mention that but imagery like that, punching himself in the head, pulling out his hair, deranged is the only word that comes to mind when you, th- when you think about mankind. I think if you were to encounter this individual in a boiler room like The Undertaker did in 1996, you surely would be scared out of your mind. I know I would be, especially at a young age when I was watching these matches. Mankind, again, you're going to see in, in my number three pick, but he also set in motion a lot of what we would see in future incarnations of these kind of scary characters. And with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Number three, Bray Wyatt. Someone that was unfortunately taken away from us far too soon. Bray Wyatt had presented a character that was very reminiscent to that of a cult leader. And if you're not new to the podcast, if you're not new to the channel, you know how fascinated I am when it comes to the supernatural slash cult-like figures in professional wrestling. His level of influence transcended not only from outside the ring, but also inside the ring. His psychology, 
the way he presented his words and his body language bray wyatt again was made for professional wrestling he had a creative mind that was made for this business i can remember in 2013 those early vignettes of the wyatt family presenting bray wyatt in those swamps and and just the music his body language i keep talking about his body language because it tells a lot of the story the way he would stretch out his arms welcoming in audience members asking them to put up their hand and accept him to let him in as the fiend would once say bray wyatt and then you move forward with bray wyatt into the fiend character the haunting image of his debut where he shows off that mask for the very first time and having the screeching music in the background the flashing lights bray wyatt again one of the more creative minds of professional wrestling that we've seen in quite some time we saw his innovative style with the firefly funhouse and how it eventually evolved into this new version of bray wyatt that led into the uncle howdy gimmick that is now the wyatt six as we know it bray wyatt i think is going to have so much of an impact moving forward still to this day because of a gimmick like uncle howdy and the group the wyatt six and i know time will move on but it will always look fondly upon the time that we had with bray wyatt moving right along let's go to number two in terms of the spookiest gimmicks in professional wrestling and i gotta put kane kane i think from his debut having one of the best debuts of all time might i add from that moment on until the end of his career always maintain this intimidating presence i will make the argument that once we got to the corporate Kane spot in his career, that's where it kind of decided to disevolve in terms of the intimidation factor. But those early years where Kane was not speaking and you only had his head tilt and his body language to go off of, Kane was a force to be reckoned with. But I want to fast forward a little bit to the 2003 run where he had unmasked. That is a hit or miss for most professional wrestling fans, but for me, it was a perfect time and that is the cane that i really enjoyed because we got to see more of personality from glenn jacobs we got to really dive into the mythos of his character that was kane you see he wore the mask due to the scars that he had obtained during the early years with the undertaker and that fire that was set ablaze but what people failed to realize is most of it was scars that he felt on the inside those mental scars, those emotional scars, and it dealt with him for years. Do you remember the time that Kane had set Jim Ross on fire? What about the time that he tombstoned Linda McMahon, or he decided to electrocute the testicles of one Shane McMahon? There were so many vile things that Kane had did in those early years without the mask that I think stick with us to this day. It's part of the reason why he secured that role as Jacob Goodnight in See No Evil. Kane, for all intents and purposes, the character, not the politician. Kane is going down as one of the greatest gimmicks of all time. But at number one, I have to give it to his older brother, The Undertaker. Who did you expect, right? The Ministry of Darkness, the Dead Man, Mr. Calloway, The Undertaker. Starting from 1990 all the way to 2020, we're talking 30 years of dominance. The Undertaker not only found ways to evolve as a character, but I'm looking at the spooky supernatural side of these gimmicks. You look at 1999 specifically, the Ministry of Darkness. He led his own cult, having sacrifices, having an unholy wedding, crucifying Stone Cold Steve Austin, bloodbaths with the brood i mean it had everything you listen to that opening theme song that the undertaker had during 1999 and that ministry of darkness run you let me know if that doesn't send chills down your spine and then you move forward to the year 2004 where he regained the gimmick of the dead man because keep in mind there was a few years in between where he was riding that mice the motorcycle but when he comes back in 2004 with that dead man gimmick playing the mind games specifically and i'll always go back to it randy orton in 2005 the build to armageddon for the hell in a cell match he had this aura with him that no matter what you were always going to have that sense of 
chill coming down your spine. I've seen The Undertaker wrestle live on two occasions. Once at Judgment Day 2006 and the second time at WrestleMania 26 against Shawn Michaels. And both times, those entrances never get old. Not only does the gong go off on television and it grabs your attention, but when you're in person, it's like an otherworldly experience. I, I really feel for those fans who have never experienced The Undertaker live in person because it is quite the spectacle. You see moments where he rises from the ground. He has the pyro, the fire, the flames rising and that slow methodical walk to the ring that focuses, that forces all his opponents and all members of the audience to watch his every move. The Undertaker is one of those individuals whose presence alone maintains the focus. Nay, it commands the focus of everyone in its attendance. And hey, would you look at that? Those are five of my favorite supernatural slash spooky gimmicks in professional wrestling. If you enjoyed this video, please give the video a like. Comment down below who is your favorite and why is it The Undertaker? And of course, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the pro wrestling videos that I produce here on this channel. And with that being said, my name is Jose Ramos Jr. Thank you again for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time.